durability and ruggedness. Am I saying that wrong? Ruggedness. Yeah, I say weird all the time. Hey everyone, this is Tyler from Craft and Tailored. In this episode of Under the Radar, we are doing something a little bit different. I'm actually going over a Black Bay 58925. This is the 2021 release of the Sterling Silver Black Bay 58. The reference on this watch is M79010 SG-001, kind of a long reference number for you there. But I know Cam did a video on the original Black Bay 58, and this is actually my personal watch, so I think it fits into the under the radar brand and also just would be something that's good to highlight and um, has a lot of the things that I love about vintage watches, but also creates a level of accessibility and I think sophistication. So the Black Bay 58 released in 2018 and has been one of the most successful heritage models that Tudor's released, but I think just in the modern watch world, under $10,000 price range timepieces. I think that they did a great job sort of representing the 6538-1958 Rolex Big Crown and kind of their own interpretation of that as a modern watch and with like the Tudor brand behind it. And since then, I like what they've done in the evolution of the Black Bay 58. I like the all blue version, I like the bronze version, and they all kind of pull from their own vintage inspirations in their own way, which I think is kind of interesting. I like the silver personally, and I think it is one of the most under the radar ones that they produced because you don't see it on that many people's wrists. I go to a lot of watch events and I go to a lot of watch shows, but I don't see Black Bay 58 925s very often at all. I think that they're just one of the coolest watches that Tudor's produced, especially since pretty much no watch brand produces a sterling silver watch case these days, and they used to be so prevalent in the early 1900s to 1910s, 1920s um, for wristwatch watchmaking. And why I love the silver case is first when this watch comes straight from the factory and when you pick this up from the authorized dealer or however you decide to purchase this watch, the finishing on this case is absolutely gorgeous. The brushing is, I don't wanna say coarse, but it's very crisp. And how the silver reacts to light with its dark notes and, and light notes kind of contrasting with one another creates a very interesting look that is separate from steel. It is still a white metal, but it doesn't give me the look or the presence of steel, nor does it give me the look and presence of white gold. It's definitely its own thing, and it's definitely its own feeling on wrist and aesthetic. It gives you a sense of that sort of elevation, that sort of more noble metal that you don't necessarily get with steel. It also has that weight to it as well. That being said, silver is a really soft metal, so I think like the first two days I had this watch on my wrist, I like set my hand down on a table and there was a nick on it. But once you sort of accept that, I think it really opens you up to be able to wear this watch and kind of just let the own natural patina of this watch sort of form as you live with it on your wrist. And it also just like feels so cool to like be able to like go in the water or just do sporting activities with a sterling silver watch on your wrist um, and know that it can actually like be put through those paces and handle that. One of the things I love about this watch are actually the bezel and dial color. It's this matching taupe color that goes so well with different strap colors and different types of straps. So I've had this watch on a green NATO. I have it on a sort of brown strap right now and it kind of blends between this green, brown and gray coloration that just makes it very universal and it accents the silver color of the watch itself really nicely. Why I like it so much is because it reminds me of vintage subs, specifically like 1960s, 70s, aluminum insert, Submariners, whether they're Tudor or Rolex, that started off black and faded to a really cool ghost coloration. We've had a lot of them in the shop before and it's very desirable amongst collectors, especially vintage collectors and it gives me that sort of feeling. It doesn't feel false either though. It doesn't feel like faux tina. It doesn't feel cheap. It gives me that presence with it being legitimately the color of the bezel, which I love. 
The timekeeping of this watch has been, I mean, nothing short of incredible. I set the time on it once when I first got it, when I picked it up from the authorized dealer, and that was three and a half weeks ago, and I looked down on it and it's keeping the time perfectly since. That's due to the in-house movement, the MT5400. It's a cost-graded movement and it is a workhorse. It's working perfectly. I think it's kind of cool that they do an exhibition case back so you can see it on the inside. I know that there has been like some reviews or talks about how this movement isn't like a beautiful Patek or Audemars Piguet movement, so why is it on display? I think it kind of is a clash of both worlds that's really cool in my opinion. It is a sterling silver case, but it is a pretty rugged movement. In my opinion, all watch movements are beautiful, and to be able to put that watch and that in-house movement on display, I think kind of is a testament to the durability and ruggedness that this watch actually offers. And I know it might seem like I'm sort of gushing about this watch and just giving it a positive review. It's because I've lived with this watch on my wrist for the past three weeks or so, and it's been awesome. I've been using it as my daily driver and I've been enjoying it quite a bit. One thing I will say about the watch is the strap that it comes on is okay. It's really pretty to look at. However, just wearing it for a few weeks at a time, it's sort of worn a little bit. It's kind of tough to break in, but once it breaks in, it kind of feels a little bit, I don't wanna say cheap, but it kind of starts fraying and it seems like it might need to be replaced sooner than maybe the nylon strap that you can purchase with it as well. And that's why I've kind of put it on my own NATO and I put it on one of our own craft and tailored straps because not that I don't like the strap that it comes with, but I just like the look of this strap better. The reasons why I chose this specific Black Bay 58 is, well, I needed a, just a modern watch for, you know, swimming and, and whatnot. But I liked this watch specifically because I don't see anybody with this watch on their wrist. I've never seen one out in the wild. Uh, I don't know of anybody who owns one actually, and I'm sure other people do. However, as far as like the Black Bay 58 and just modern watches go, I think it definitely fits into the under the radar category because first and foremost, the price point is awesome. You're getting a precious metal watch under $5,000. I think the retail on this watch is 4.4 plus tax from wherever you live. For me, it was under 5,000 and it's just so much bang for your buck. I love the look of the precious metal. I love how it wears and I love how it wears in through just wearing it every day. Being able to wear something on your wrist that is a little bit more under the radar, most people probably interpret it as steel, but it is sterling silver. It kind of has that weight to it. And nobody else really is wearing these. I, I, I never see them around. And I think it kind of has that level of exclusivity without the crazy price point or crazy high point of entry to get into. So I actually bought this watch without the intention of doing a video on it, but just through my process of wearing it, I think it just fit into the under the radar scope quite a bit. And I just want to be able to share that with you guys and have my own sort of personal experience in this watch. So with that, I want to say thank you for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you enjoyed the video, you can follow us on Instagram at Craft and Tailored. And if you have watch questions, we are here to help. You can drop us a line at info at Craft and Tailored.com. Thanks, and we'll see you in the next one. Hello? Hi, Tyler, I'm downstairs. Oh, okay, I'll have uh, Dylan run out to you. Thank you. Thank you, bye. Dylan! Dylan! <laughs> so much footage of you guys yelling at <laughs> <laughs>